so you can use AltiSpice or uh, MicroCap. So I don't know if you know it. So I, I like MicroCap. Uh, I had an old colleague that showed me about it. But AltiSpice is very common, free. Are we talking about free stuff? So MicroCap just brought that also free this year. So it's nice libraries and stuff. So yeah, MicroCap or AltiSpice. Can I show you how to make a wall outline in Altium? Yes. Let me just start a new project. New PCB. So at the bottom here, you should see um, bottom of the top based push L. If you push L, layers will pop up. And then you can go mechanical layer. Normally they'll have it on here, but you can just go uh, add mechanical layer, the layer type, board, and I'll say board outline. And then layer number will just be, will be where it pops up on this. Um, so then I push OK, and at the bottom here, you should say, see um, board outline, I hope. Yeah, there. So I always make it, uh, let's change the color. So L for layers. There's no, I want to make it yellow. My board line is always yellow. So there we go. And I can just go, so I always put my origin on the bottom here. So to do that, I'd say edit, origin set, and I'll pop it there. And I can go, make sure your board outline is highlighted. Push place line. You can push J-O to jump to origin. And I can click on it, just make it anything. And I want to make it, uh, I don't like moles. So to get away from moles, I can click on it, push Q, and it'll come millimeters at the bottom here. Uh, you guys can see. Uh, let me just hide this. There's millimeters at the bottom here. So then I can go make it width, length is 100. And now I just have to JO. A square, 100 by 100. Now I can click on a line and push tab and it will highlight everything touching it. Now I can go tools, design, highlight to you, board shape, define from selected objects, and that will be your board. If you push three, your board will be like this. So you have to make sure you have a layer at the bottom, board layer, uh, body mechanical layers, place lines, highlight all the lines and define it by saying design, board shape, define from objects. I hope that helped. Uh, can you explain all the layers? Woof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so if I push L, so you get your top layer and bottom layer. That's the track layer. So if I go here and I push PT place track, uh, you can see the red. Uh, the bottom is literally what it says. So it's different tracks running from bottom to top. So if I go 3D, you can see I've got one at the top, one at the bottom. Uh, and you get your board outline we just spoke about. Your overlay is your images on the board. Um, so place text. Ah, make sure you click on it. Place text. I'm saying place track, it should be place text. Uh, which is string. So if we go hello, now this is the hello you will see on the PCB or the watch, I say. So your designators, images, things like that. Um, I wonder if I can show you guys. So all this white stuff that's all um, silk called top overlay. Uh, what else? Solder pay, solder mask opening. Uh, when you have a component, uh, so you can see the bottom copper. That's physical copper. So the top and top overlay, bottom overlay. It's just silk on top, top and bottom. And then you get your top solder. Why are you not showing? Because I'm at the bottom. So the solder is when you order a stencil. We'll tell the manufacturer how big the stencil will be because that's why they have their solder 
uh, paste. We don't really use that. That's the paste. And your solder mask is your solder mask opening. The solder is your stencil, how big they should open it for there. So there's my paste. You can see it is a bit smaller than my opening. So the bottom solder is literally the opening of the, you can see the copper through there. That's the copper, which is the top layer or actually the bottom layer. And then you've got your solder mask opening is the gap here you see where they open the board so you can see the copper. And then your paste is, um, is the stencil manufacturer will look at this and say, okay, I need to make the stencil that big. So when they do that squeegee thing, that's the amount of paste on the pins. Hey, Nikhil. Hey, how's it going? Good. Well, I have a few questions. Yes. Hopefully it's not difficult. Um, I'm, in, I'm, in high, I'm in high school and yes, I awesome. want to start from scratch. Yeah. So I want to ask you <laughs> how to start design up many PCBs for your projects, just like the uh, mini drone studio and which softwares are needed. Um, so for you as a student, you can either get Altium or Altium you get for free for six months, I think. But for you, I'll just start with KiCad. Um, do you have KiCad installed or not? No, no. So I, I would, um, we have a video. I don't know if you saw a playlist about KiCad and all the tutorials or not. So if you go into our YouTube channel, let me find it. Uh, Kerry made a YouTube video of how to install KiCad and things like that. So I would start with KiCad. Um, so okay. how much how much do you know about PC design? Not so much, just <laughs> like little things. So you're in high school now. So you haven't studied electronics. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm in standard and I'm joining for college from next year. Ah, okay, okay. Um, just like from bachelor's in technology. Oh, nice. Join. I would I would install KiCad and then have you played around with Arduinos or ESP thirty twos or yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you built stuff on a breadboard? Um, on breadboard, I I created not so much, but uh, one to two projects on Arduino, just like a calculator, a Bluetooth car. Okay, yeah, yeah. with the help of bread, many breadboards. Yeah, so the the best way will be like what you did there take it to a pcb so you know a system that works so you build a bluetooth car you said oh yeah. what projects did you build not so much just yeah. like uh, um once i made uh on pcb yeah no no it doesn't have to be pcb so um, sometimes it's best to just have built something on a breadboard or you made add arduino with some wires so a lot of people start like that with arduino with the wires and you've got some sensors yeah, so, just so sensors in uh, just like uh, Servo GG and that's Servo 9G Servo mode project uh, okay. on breadboard from basics. Yeah, but that's perfect. Most advanced, most of advanced. Because all the PCB is, it's you taking an idea you had and with wires and stuff, and you're just making it much neater and much more compact. So if you already made that stuff, I would say take a project you've already done and try to make it on PCB. So whatever you've done, okay. the servers, uh, you can get the Arduino uh, schematics from the internet as well. So you don't really know to know everything. And then start putting the schematic there, take it to the PCB, and then try to rebuild what you already rebuilt. Because I think that was a good way to start, if that makes sense. If anyone out because there- you are making, it, Because you are making some advanced projects and advanced no, 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 designs no, no, on your YouTube channel. Yeah, just very advanced. I would, not, I would not make an advanced project, to be honest with you. So, Rather keep simple at the beginning because um, if you get something working, it gives you like motivation to push, push, push. But if you keep jumping to the, the most complex thing, it's not, it's, it gets frustrating because PC design can take long, eh? It's not, it's, it, it takes a lot of time to yeah. root and place components and stuff. So you really have to enjoy it. Um, I would, I don't know what you like, what your hobbies are. So I'm enjoying light at the moment. So I like playing with LEDs. So a simple project can be with LEDs. Um, pushing a button, turning on LEDs, uh, taking a voltage from uh, five volts, stepping it down to three volts to power the LEDs. Uh, I enjoy playing with capacitance touch, sens capacitance touch sensors. That's quite nice, the, um, there's a chip I use. Uh, what's your hobbies? Because it's always nice to do something that's- that My hobbies is to, in the research, research on physics topics and uh, just like making some projects uh, on uh, some electronics electronics but what what at home would what at home would you like to have 
So it's always nice to choose a project that will be helpful for you. It doesn't help you just. No, do um, again, um, this, I want to start from basics now because uh, everywhere I want, um, whenever I was on YouTube, that's uh, many people that uh, who creates uh, big projects, no? Yeah, you know, on that, YouTube, that's uh, very advanced and complicated. They yeah. don't tell any basics about it. Because uh, you'll notice most people just want to show off how smart they are. <laughs> they don't want to do the basic stuff. But anyway, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just thinking. So I would start with maybe a at Mega um, 328, like the Uno IC. Uh, you know, do you know Uno? Mega 3, yes, so I have an idea. Yeah, so you can, I do know. The, you can use that schematic. And then maybe uh, put a connector to move a server motor with a switch and yeah. LED. So I think that's a nice way to start because then you're controlling um, you're controlling an LED, you're controlling input with a button and you're moving a server motor. So that might be a nice way to start um, and then build from there. Basic. Yeah, basic. Um, yeah, so Ranesh says make a voltage divider. Yeah, you can do that with resistors. So if you have a battery input, can I make a um, can I make a voltage converter? Let's convert three point seven volts to nine volts, and that's like a buck converter. You can if you want. What voltage you want to do? Uh, 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 boost or buck up or down? Run just uh, just to like uh, to run twelve volts motors on it. So you want to go twelve volts to five volts or three volts? Yeah. Yeah, do that. It's so you can use a DC jack. Plug the DC jack in. Uh, there's different ICs you can use, LM stuff. Uh, then you can take to five volts, to three volts. Um, yeah, then you can maybe put on different LEDs depending on the voltage that's available. But I would just get started. Um, and then you can try to read it like Ranesh says. Um, um, my current project is this I'm trying to make uh, from the use from the old TV, old TV transformer. Yeah, it's like uh, I'm just, yeah, and uh, I want to make a high voltage arcs. Oof. High voltage arcs. <laughs> you playing with fire? <laughs> no, that's. Um, so what's, what's the voltage you want to convert? Um, this I'm, I'm, use, I'm also using a chalk of tube lights. It's, you know, tube light chalk. Also, not that. So when you get to high voltage on PCB design, you're gonna have to start worrying about your track width, your clearances, because the arcs can jump across, you can burn. Um, it's not something I would advise if you're not totally comfortable with it. Uh, so rather start small, I'd rather go from the 12 volts DC to DC. Uh, the transformer is it for AC to DC. Or... So if you go to our YouTube channel, there's tutorials by KiCad. So how to install it, how to make a schematic, how to make a PCB. Um, have a look at that, install it. And then we can maybe tomorrow you can come back and we can, uh, once you have KiCad installed, we can go through it and I'll show you how to start the PCBD, PCB design, how to take the Arduino schematic, put it on the board. And then I can help you like that, if that will help.